Welcome to the Counter Vortex, your weekly roundup of underreported news and views from around the world with an unapologetically radical dissident left perspective. Brought to you by your chief reporter, ranter, and blogger, Bill Weinberg. That would be me. Here are the headlines from this week. UN experts called for a prompt, transparent, and independent investigation into possible war crimes and crimes against humanity perpetrated in the occupied Palestinian territory, including the Gaza Strip, since Israel's new military offensive began last month. At this point, meeting October, the month before last, Quote, independent investigators must be given necessary resources, support, and access required to conduct prompt, thorough, and impartial investigations into crimes allegedly committed by all sides to the conflict. The experts said, calling on Israel, the Palestinian Authority, and the de facto authorities in Gaza to cooperate fully with investigations. The National Coalition of Syrian Revolutionary and Opposition Forces, which maintains an Istanbul-based government in exile, issued a press release with details of the latest aerial attack in rebel-held Idlib province by forces of the Bashar Assad regime at the village of Kakfin, regime warplanes specifically targeted a family engaged in the olive harvest, resulting in tragic loss of nine innocent lives, including women and children, according to the statement. It said, this appalling crime underscores the urgent need for a resolute international response to strengthen accountability for the ongoing war crimes perpetrated by the Assad regime against the Syrian people. Burkina Faso's emergency aid and security challenges are deepening as the junta-led regime pursues an aggressive military campaign against jihadist insurgents who have now extended their control to some 40% of the national territory. The country has faced armed insurgency since 2015 but fatalities and relief needs have hit record highs since Captain Ibrahim Traoré seized power from a different junta last year and launched a total war, quote unquote, against the jihadists. Over 2 million people have been displaced and 4.7 million people require assistance, an increase of more than 1 million over last year. The Chinese government has increased mosque closures in northern Ningxia region and Gansu province, home to significant populations of Hui Muslims, according to a report by Human Rights Watch. The campaign of closures marks an expansion of the policy beyond the Uyghur people of Xinjiang region, officially termed consolidation. The campaign calls for shutting down mosques or modifying their architectural features to align with more typically Chinese aesthetics. The Hui, a distinctive ethno-religious group in China, numbering over 10 million, are now at the forefront of concerns regarding the government's broader campaign to consolidate mosques. The campaign, which began five years ago in Xinjiang, presaged the mass internment of Uyghurs in the region. A clash between thousands of monarchist protesters and police took place in Kathmandu, Nepal. Police used tear gas and water cannons to disperse protesters who chanted slogans in support of the former king, Yanendra Shah, and attempted to storm barricades protecting government offices. Monarchist leader and prominent businessman Durga Prasai has allegedly been under house arrest since the protest, 
and his followers have filed a habeas corpus petition with the Supreme Court for his release. The monarchy was abolished in 2008, pursuant to the decision of a constituent assembly formed under an agreement that put an end to months of pro-democracy protest in 2006. But a right-wing coalition, prominently including the Hindu nationalist Rastriya Prajatantra Party, has launched a campaign for its restoration. In a joint statement, the Philippine government and National Democratic Front of the Philippines, NDFP, announced an agreement to reset peace negotiations in an attempt to end a 54-year-long conflict. The agreement, facilitated by Norway, was signed in Oslo by representatives of both President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and the NDFP. The statement cited socioeconomic and environmental issues, as well as foreign security threats facing the country as reasons for the reopening of negotiations. Talks last stalled in 2017, when then-President Rodrigo Duterte broke off a peace process and declared the NDFP-affiliated New People's Army a terrorist organization. In a disturbing coincidence in Missoula, Montana, a Palestine Solidarity March to protest the bombardment of Gaza ran into a separate but simultaneous anti-Israel march by neo-Nazis. Since the Gaza bombardment began, open neo-Nazi marches have also been reported from Madison, Wisconsin, Dallas, Texas, and elsewhere around the country. Yet, in addition to displaying enthusiasm for Hamas, their banners also read, Refugees Not Welcome. And we may assume it was a similar ultra-right xenophobe who shot three Palestinian youths in Burlington, Vermont. This makes it all the more maddening that elements of the left share with the Nazis an unseemly enthusiasm for Hamas, providing much fodder for the pro-Israel and anti-woke right. In episode 201 of the Counter Vortex podcast, Bill Weinberg, that would be me, continues to explore the dilemma. Listen on Patreon, patreon.com slash countervortex. And while you're there, please subscribe. Also check out our sibling website, New Jewish Resistance, for a proudly Jewish anti-Zionist perspective on Gaza and the question of Palestine generally. New JewishResistance.org, fighting Zionism and anti Semitism, defending pan Semitic unity. And do follow us on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. And please join us next week for the Counter Vortex.